Welcome back uh, to Breakfast Central. Now let's get straight into a little bit of entertainment stories this morning. We have Bolanli Oluchi Babalola, uh, who had a fantastic Hi. weekend from the pictures that I saw and the videos I saw on your Instagram. Uh, you definitely had a better weekend than we did. And I must say congratulations, massive congratulations, B.O.B. to you for sharing the stage with Kiss Daniel at someone else's wedding. We know that you've been a huge, you've had him as a huge crush. <laughs> Finally, your dreams have come true. Come on, you guys, you guys, seriously. You know when you have someone that uh, you have been crushing over and you are supposed to be forming to be a celebrity yourself, but you've not met this person and then you just see him, you're like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to let this moment pass me by. <laughs> well done, well done. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you. But anyway, I told the bride, soon. I said, I'm sorry, anything that happens when Kiss Daniel comes on stage, take it like that. And it happened. It's not my fault. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Thank you for sharing that moment with us. We love watching it. My pleasure. All right, good now what's one. happening in the world of entertainment? Okay, good morning, good morning once again. We're coming to the end of May, as you all know. So yeah, this is the news we have for you today. Popular Nigerian skit maker Isaac Aloma, aka Zeke Saloma, says he owes no explanation to anybody after accusations was made against him last week about him demanding for sex from male actors he uses in his skits before working with them. This was revealed during an interview. The comedian stated that the story was a mere fabrication. He said, I really don't want to talk about these things. I have been told that if people don't talk about one, it means one is really not doing well. I don't blame any vlog for writing whatever they want. I blame people who give them <coughs> audience because they are just looking for ways to drive traffic to their blogs. I am not clearing any air. People can believe whatever they want to believe. <laughs> Aloma also went on to talk about how he's been struggling in the industry. Now, Aloma, who is a former lecturer, says that anybody who claims that he has demanded sex from them should speak out. He added, the best thing is for you to watch my skids. Anybody that looks like an up and coming comedian should be asked what they did for me to feature them. I became successful because I put in hard work. I, I'm, I just keep wondering what's happening to the industry lately. Last week, we were talking about Kevin Spassi and his own rape allegations or sexual allegations. So I really want to ask, um, Olive, is Nigeria fast becoming like Hollywood? I don't, I don't understand well, what's with the whole sex allegations and now it's even the other way. It's not um, the opposite sex now. We're talking about Zika Lume or is this on PR stunts? Well, like I, I do not think that it will be wise for anyone to have a PR stunt that surrounds allegations of sex for rules in that regard or sex for to be put in a script. That is very distasteful and might have the counter effect of really, really messing up with one's career as opposed to granting the person the supposed publicity. What I do think is that these things have been happening and people are just only able to speak out more, like we said the last yeah, time. True. The society is now open to these conversations because we're seeing more people coming out to talk about their experiences. We're seeing several people, you know, facing sanctions in mm -hmm. this regard. So what's happening is we're just highlighting it more. We're just talking about it more, but it's always happened before now. Yes, well, very true. true. You know, and I hope, you know, these things happening, you know, would give more people uh, the uh, the um, the freedom to speak out if they have you know been abused by anybody in the industry. We need to have you know a more comfortable space uh, space for people to be able to air out and you know expose their abusers. Yeah. True. Um, True. And, and so it's a good thing you know, in my in my opinion. But why does it always come out when it looks like the person is in their prime? Like your career is doing good, you're everywhere. People want to have collaborations with you, and then suddenly they just start bringing up sexual allegations or something else. I don't know. Whilst we must acknowledge that not all of them are true, which is why it's important that we take everything we hear and do our investigation, our due diligence, because some people are just, you know, they're about the business of pushing out a smear campaign. People don't always like the sure. idea of everybody succeeding. So, of course, once you're at the peak of your career, it's not surprising to see that something one has done years ago might come to the fore, which is why it's important that every day that we live our lives, we're, we're deliberate about the choices that we make. It's not always easy. Some, sometimes we make poor choices. But we must always envision the kind of future that we want for ourselves and make sure that the decisions that we're making today are decisions that cumulatively would lead us to that kind of future. Because tomorrow, somebody can just come out of the past 
and just say, I remember that one day that this and that happened, and all of a sudden, the things that you've taken years to build just comes crumbling like a pack of cards. Absolutely. And uh, just to also quickly mention, um, we would only, you know, have this level of attention on it because they're celebrities, but it doesn't mean that people aren't called out even, you know, before they become famous. Um, I'm sure that, you know, in, in the very, very small levels across the society, people are called out. But because we don't know them, they're not popular yes, uh, persons, yes. then we may not, you know, you know, you get to hear about it. Um, but, you know, like Oliver said, um, it's important that you are very, very cautious of the way that you live your life because you don't know where you would be in the next five, ten years. And somebody might, you know, be willing to expose you. Oh, yeah. True. Thank you guys for that contribution. All right, let's 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 move on to the next story for the day. Now, there's one thing to note is whatever you do, always remember that it will come haunting you in the future. Now, in a life full of superheroes and horror and you know what, every other thing, everybody needs a superhero in their life. I, for one, definitely need one now. We're coming to one that is fast becoming a superhero to many. Top Gun 2 sequel scored the highest and biggest opening of Cruz's career globally over the weekend. In a promising sign for the summer box office, Paramount and Skydance's Top Gun Maverick scored the second best Memorial Day opening of all time with a projected three-day domestic haul of $124 million and $151 million for the four days. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End remains the record holder with a Friday to Monday treasure chest of $153 million according to Disney. Well, the film started off with a massive $51.8 $51 million on Friday, May 27th, including $19.3 million in previews as it opened in more than 4,700 theaters in North America. Maverick's launch is also a career best for Tom Cruise and is the first time he has had a film open to $100 million or more outside America. Top Gun 2 is also doing equally well in business and all aspects, considering it isn't playing in China or Russia. The film opened to $124 million from 62 markets for an early global haul of $248 million through Sunday. The film's release was delayed for two years due to coronavirus pandemic, as you all know. But yeah, it's out now. You can go to the cinemas and watch it. The Mission Impossible actor Cruz promoted the film with a premiere in San Diego, the Cannes Festival, a royal-sponsored screening in London, and another premiere in Japan. Well, what can I say? You would think this man is getting old, but Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise is at the peak of his career. He keeps giving us more, he keeps giving, and he doesn't get tired. I compare him with Jackie Chan. Those men are not getting tired. But anyway, that's all we have for you. Make sure you have fun this week, even as we know June is coming. I think by Wednesday, it will be like 1st of June or something. Yes. That's my birthday month, so you all better get ready. I'm coming in with full energy <laughs> this June. Full energy. We don't expect anything <laughs> less, VOB. But thank you very much for joining us. Always a delight to have you join us here on Breakfast Central. Oh, I wish you an amazing rest of the week.